Welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make this chunky glitter material procedurally in Blender. Just before we start, let me remind you I'm using Blender 4.2 Long Term Support, Windows 11, NVIDIA Graphics Card Cycles Render Engine, and I'll be using a custom startup file that I'll show you how to create in a separate video. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. Here we are in that custom startup file. So I have a room with some lighting, a camera, the object that I want to uh, apply the shader to. And of course, I am gonna move over to the shading tab, enable display render preview, use the cycles render engine and I have the noise threshold set to 0.5 with denoising enabled. So I select the object, click on new to apply a new material. And then we have the principled shader set up already here. I'm gonna increase the metallic and roughness values to one and change the index of refraction to 1.45. I will be applying a coat, but I'm gonna control that with some nodes later. I'm gonna leave everything else as it is. And then on the sheen, I'm going to give that a weight of 0.2. If you press Shift A and search for a glossy BSDF or a glossy shader, we're going to put that above the principled shader. Then I'm going to press Control Shift, right click and drag between the two to apply a mix shader. If you don't have that option available, you can of course press Shift A to search for a mix shader and connect it up as you see here. On the glossy shader, I'm gonna decrease the roughness to 0 0.01. And then I'll start building my node tree. And you can see what's happening in the preview above. I'm going to get a brightness and color node my mouse went a bit off there, so it was dragging it everywhere. Sorry, a brightness and contrast node here. And in Blender 4.2, obviously, if you drag out from a node on a connector, it will actually bring up that box that we get with the Shift-A anyway. So that's one quicker way to work. I've added a color ramp there. Then from the color ramp, I'm going to drag out and search for a wave texture and connect that up via the color output. Then I'm going to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node to that wave texture, connecting up the object output from the texture coordinate to the vector of the mapping node, changing it to rings and sign and spherical, as you see me do here. In fact, actually, no, I'm going to change it to saw. Scale I'm going to set as 100, distortion at 100, detail at 100, Detail scale to 3 and roughness to 0.5. Now it almost looks like those waves have disappeared, but we'll come back to that. I'm changing the color mode on the color ramp to HSL and setting it as clockwise. And then I'm just adjusting the colors until I get a full rainbow. So in actual fact, I have to set the saturation as one and the value as one and the hue as 0.99 on the second color. So then it goes from red to red, but via the entire rainbow. Brightness value, I'm gonna set at 0.1 and the contrast at two. And then to control the factor of the mix shader, I'm going to start by getting a map range node. Now ignore me doing the value here. I made a mistake. I actually wanted to go in at the from min because I'm going to control the value with a different node. So I'm just correcting myself here. And I got myself a bit confused as well. 
It's easily done. I don't often use the map range node. Anyway, I went for 0 0.01 on from min and 0.99, then 0.1 and 0.2 on the last two boxes. Now I said I was going to control that value with a node and that node is going to be a Voronoi texture. But I want that to be using the distance output. I'm going to take the vector output from the mapping node and connect that up to the Voronoi texture. And I'm going to change the scale to 150, detail to 0, roughness 0.5 and randomness to 1. I'm then going to get a normal map and connect the colour output from the Voronoi texture to the colour input on the normal map. That I'm then going to connect into the normal input on the glossy shader and you can already see that's what kicks in that glittery effect. Change the strength to 0.75 and I'm also going to connect this up to the weight on the coat of the principal shader. And I'm just adding, connect, adding a connector in there by pressing shift and right slashing through it. And there's our node setup. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Very chunky glitter. Now the nodes all to the left, so the glossy and all those bits are what creates the glitter. So I'm going to put a frame around them and give it a name. And then the principal shader is just adding those extra bits like the me metallic roughness and also the coat for the glossiness or shininess. I'm just giving it a name there so I can come back to it again in the future and append it to another project if I need to. Now for an extra detail in the compositing tab I've added a little bit of lens distortion. I've added the denoise node and also mixed those in and then run them through a glare node with the settings that you see here. That's just going to add a bit of sparkle to the final render. So let's go and do that now. And there we go, in about six seconds, chunky glitter with a bit of sparkle for each frame. That's not bad when it comes to rendering out in Blender. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one and will find some use for it. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, leave any questions you have below the video and of course subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.